We've just revealed the storm names for 2023-2024. Are you on the list? Or maybe you know someone whose name is on the list. I'm Alex Deakin. And I'm Adam McGiven. All will be revealed shortly. But first, let's deal with a question that we always get asked whenever we talk about storm names. Why? Why do we name storms? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward, really. It's to raise awareness, to make people aware that a storm is coming, that severe weather is potentially on the way. We only name storms when we're expecting the weather to be especially lively, potentially damaging and disruptive. So when we get those storms on the horizon, give them a name, and the word gets spread wider on normal media and on social media as well. So it's all about getting the awareness around, making people aware. That's what the Met Office are here for. Yeah, essentially it's to save lives. The more people who know about Storm, the more famous it is, the more people are likely to change their plans and potentially avoid things that would be dangerous to do when a storm hits. I wonder how many names you can remember from previous storms. We've been doing it for uh, eight years, what I think it is now. So can you remember any specific storms? Put it in the chat if you do. We do love reading all of your comments, whatever they're about. But if you can remember a specific storm, how it impacted you, then, then do let us know in the comments. I remember when Storm Aiden was first on the list. <laughs> and then, lo and behold, a storm turns up and the French named it first and they named it Storm Alex. Uh, always yes. trying to get in there first. I, I am always, <laughs> always trying to do that. I remember that very well indeed, yes. Uh, Storm Alex, Trumping Storm Aiden. When was that? Two years ago? Three years ago? Longer than that. Uh, Longer than that. But you must also remember Storm Eunice mm. and uh, part of that three storms in a week when we had back in 2022. So that was a, a very lively week of weather. We were very busy here. Yeah, we had three big storms hitting. Dudley, Eunice, Franklin. Different parts of the country were affected by different storms. I think the biggest impacts came from Storm Eunice, some really significant wind gusts in the south in particular, 80, 90 mile per hour wind gusts. That's the one, isn't it, where the um, O2 was affected. Remember the, the, the things blew off the roof? Yeah. And there was some incredible footage of trees falling down in, in different parts of the south of the country. Incredibly powerful. 122 miles an hour on the needles. needles. Very exposed yeah. site, of course, but the needles had 122, which I think was a record for that site. Yeah. Um, remarkable week, very busy here, but we haven't had many storms since that week back in 2022. But um, why we name storms, here's some numbers to back up why we name the storms, because when you name storms, people hear about them more widely. Some examples here, you know, three million people uh, used the website uh, during that February spell, 5.6 million views of the warning details page on our app and uh, a lot of the social content that we were involved in also you know, went viral. Yeah, 99% of people who were in the red warning area for Storm Eunice were aware that a storm was coming in. And so that's just a truly exceptional stat just to show how naming these storms makes them famous and then those people are able to make decisions about their safety. And we know also that it works. We, we get comments across our social media channels, some really good ones coming on here about people uh, tying their trampolines down. Uh, you know, people are actually acting. And that, again, that is the whole point of the Met Office, that people can enjoy the weather when it's safe to do so. But when the weather is going to potentially be disruptive, cause problems, that people do actually take notice and do act on it. And there's uh, quite a bit of evidence on here that, that people do do that. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about. Now, we're not the only ones that name storms, of course. Uh, everyone knows the Americans name hurricanes, but we're not just copying Americans because loads of European countries name storms as well. In fact, we're in a partnership with Met Erin in uh, Ireland and KNMI in the Netherlands. And so together we form this group of European countries who name storms and we share the, the names on the list. And if a storm comes along that's going to be impactful for the Netherlands, then they'll name it and they'll pick a name from our list, likewise for Erin. Or if we uh, are likely to be impacted by a, storm, uh, a low pressure and we name that storm, then Erin will name it that, uh, it will come to that list and KNMI as well. And there are a few naming groups across Europe. So this just shows you how many countries across Europe name various storms. 
Yeah, it's pretty wide. It's across most of Western Europe now. So there's the, the southwestern group, Spain, Portugal, France, Belgium. Uh, and then the group that we're in, the western group, uh, the Met Office, Met Air and KMI as well. And then the northern group, that green group you can see there, covering Denmark, Sweden and Norway. Every group has their own list, but if, uh, as happened with Storm Alex uh, a few years ago, the French named Storm Alex, it, it then moved up and affected us, and so so we, we carried on with that name as well, and the same would happen the other way around also, and actually happened this year a couple of times with Storm Noah and Storm Otto, both named by uh, different groups, but they did impact us, and we, we kept those, those names uh, for a Storm Otto in particular, I think probably it was almost on the cusp of being named by by uh, the Netherlands, by KNMI, but actually the Danes just named it a little bit earlier, but it was in this area here. It was bringing very strong winds and did bring damaging winds to the Netherlands as well as, uh, as, well as Denmark. Likewise, if there's an ex-hurricane uh, that then brings impacts to the UK, then it will keep that name that it had as a hurricane no longer. Hurricane, of course, we don't get hurricanes in the UK, we haven't got the warm mud of waters, but we can still get powerful storms that originally were hurricanes, and we'll then call them by their original name, but as a, as a storm. So, yeah, we're, lots of people name storms. It's not just the Americans, and it's not just us. All these European countries do as well, and all for the same reason. And we know that it works. We know that it does raise awareness. Now, people often wonder, um, one of the big questions that we get asked is, is when do you name a storm? Is it, is it based on just specific criteria? So if you're going to get a 60 mile an hour gust, will you name a storm? But it's not like that. It's not as simple as that. It's impact based. Like all of our warnings, we do it based on the impacts that the weather is likely to cause. If you think about it, that makes perfect sense because uh, across our islands, there are very different uh, areas that are gonna be more susceptible to different things. And of course, time of day, the date through the year, even, even day of the week, uh, really does make an impact, make, make a difference. If you, if you think about it, you know, a 60 mile an hour gust of wind across Northern Scotland in the middle of February at three o'clock in the morning, isn't gonna to have too many impacts because they see those kind of winds pretty often. But a 60 mile an hour wind across Southern England in October when the trees are in leaf, that has an impact during rush hour affecting a major conurbation, then yeah, that's, that's gonna have impact uh, and affect and cause disruption. So you've gotta think about all of those things. Just one of the, one of the aspects mm. that our chief meteorologist here has to think about when, when, when choosing whether to name a storm or not. A good example of that was the recent storm Anthony, which mm. any other time of the year, it probably would have just been under the storm naming criteria. Mm. It's the fact that it hit right in the middle of Saturday, in the middle of the school holidays, and in the southwest. So as you can imagine, a lot of people coming down or leaving the southwest of England on a Saturday in the school holidays with caravans, people camping, people uh, putting up temporary outdoor structures, festivals, all that stuff we have to take into account when naming the storm. So a storm like that in, the, in August, in a busy period of wet, uh, uh, holiday season, and you know that's gonna cause a lot more impact than the, the same storm hitting a different part of the country at a different time of year. Um, so that's your, the kind of thing that you've got to take into account. Obviously, you also need to know what the weather's doing and have a, a reasonable handle and, and be reasonably confident that we are going to see those kind of gusts. Then take into account, are they going to cause disruption? And that's, that's a difficult call to make that, that the chief meteorologist has to kind of initially look at and say, oh, this, this could be potentially, but then lots of other people are involved and a lot of our partners are involved as well. And, People like the Environment Agency will have an impact. Has it, has it been wet in the build-up to it? Is the ground already saturated? Could that have an impact? Obviously, as you said, time of year. Are there big events planned over the, over the course of when this storm is likely to hit? So there's a lot of factors that need to be taken into consideration uh, before we actually go ahead and name a storm. We've only had a couple this year, mm. haven't we? In fact, and, and only both of them very recently. Well, Anthony was the first in this storm season, which runs from September to August. And so we had it right at the 11th hour, effectively, Storm Anthony. Then Storm Betty, of course, that was named by Met Erin. So it wouldn't have been named by us. It wasn't quite impactful enough but we had Storm Betty shortly after uh, Storm Anthony and a part of the reason we mentioned how powerful those storms were in February of 2022 and we had three in a week part of the reason the difference between that situation and the last season 
is the jet stream. Now, this here shows the uh, jet stream anomaly uh, for February 2022. And here's the UK, here's uh, Canada, and there's the Atlantic. And what you can see there is this big slice of blue across the Atlantic, or purple, isn't it? It is. I was going to say, I don't want to correct you, but I, it's purple, I think. Yeah, but, but, I, but. <laughs> I was told before this recording it was purple, and I keep seeing blue. <laughs> Uh, so this shows where the jet stream was much stronger than normal. Now we often get a strong jet stream across the Atlantic in that location. So it was even stronger yeah, so than that's normal. Anomaly means yeah, stronger than normal, how much stronger or weaker than normal it was. So that is, it was particularly strong right across the UK, wasn't it, for that February for 2022. That February. And that obviously drove those deepening lows across the Atlantic and the three named storms. By contrast, this is February 2023. Again, there's the UK, and you've got the purple and red colours in different places. Uh, the, the, this ridge of high pressure, February 2023, uh, across southern parts of the UK, it was quite a settled, dry, mild month, if I recall correctly. The jet stream, or the core of that, up towards Iceland. And that's just compared to two months. Obviously, we had very different weather patterns during other months of the most recent winter and the autumn and so on. But uh, a common theme was a weaker jet stream and more blocked patterns. We certainly mm. saw that during spring and the early part of summer, quite blocked patterns, high pressure persisting close to the UK. Yeah, so the jet has generally been weaker for, for a good part of the year and, and or further north. And that's one of the reasons why we haven't had as many storms uh, so far through this year. But we have had two. Oh, I thought that's that was it. the big reveal. I was, <laughs> oh, I've given it away. No, that's, no, that's this, this, list. This, is, this is the list that's just finished. Uh, we only had two, uh, Anthony and Betty, as you said, both in August. Those other two storms that kind of affected the UK named by other, uh, other countries, uh, Otto and Noah as well, but only two in August. So, no Storm Killian, no Storm Daisy, sadly, the name of my four-year-old. <laughs> She'll be disappointed. Ah, oh, <laughs> totally disappointed. And of course, previous years, we have been much further down the list, got to H a couple of years. The busiest year was before that, one of the first years we did it, 2015-16, where we got down to... Storm Katie. Oh, good knowledge. Good storm knowledge. storms that, yeah. that year. But it was a really unsettled winter, that, actually, 15-16. Really stormy. So, what about this year? Will it be a stormy th year this year? That'll be the next question we get asked. Mm. Too early to say, of course, but we do have a list of names. Da, 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 da. Is that the drum roll? The That's drum it. roll. Thank you for, thank you for sort of. staying tuned, by the way. This is the moment you've, you've all been waiting for, the big reveal of the storm names for this year. Are you on the list? Do you know someone who's on the list? Press the button, Aidan. There we go. Ta da There are the storm names for 2023 into 2024. Storm Agnes first on the list, followed by a name nominated by the Netherlands, Storm Babbitt. Now, every year we take suggestions from the public, and you can always suggest a name through our website. So we always look at those and take some of those suggestions. But this year also, we've picked a few people out who help to protect the public in times of severe weather. An example of that is our third name on the list, Storm Kieran. Kieran works for the Department of Infrastructure in Northern Ireland, and it's a, one of the people who, who looks after the public during severe weather, and that's not the only one, is it? No, Debbie, Debbie Garft, recently retired as Senior Policy Officer from the Scottish Government Flooding Team. And later down the list, we have uh, Regina, Regina Simmons, uh, who works for NRW, National Resources Wales, and she's a team leader for warnings and informing. And of course, Stuart is Stuart Sampson from the Environment Agency, who has helped manage water supply through a series of droughts during the last 20 years. Now, it's not just us who choose the names. We do it in partnership, as we've discussed with Met Aaron and KNMI. And Met Aaron, uh, the Irish Weather Service, have chosen some names in here uh, relating to scientists. Uh, and um, you can find out more information about all of that and how we name storms and, and why we name storms. More information, of course, in our press release. Let us know in the comments how many storms you think we'll see this storm mm. season. Only two last year, but six the year before. So 
it varies a lot. Yeah, we've been further down the list in years gone by. A lot will depend on how active the jet stream is, but maybe other things will be at play as well. For example, El Nino. Mm. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, then you're probably interested in our other YouTube videos. Hit subscribe. We do a deep dive every week. We do a 10 day trend every week that uh, uh, really deal with the meteorological minutiae. So if you're interested in weather, then you know, those other videos on our channel. And please, please make sure you're following us right across social media. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, X, and we are on TikTok as well. And if we do name a storm, we will be the first to let you know. So the best way to stay aware is to make sure you're following us right across social media. And of course, we'll have all the messages of impacts and advice from those storms. So that is the best way to stay safe. That's what we're here for, to keep you safe, essentially. And thank you very much for watching this. And thank you for following us.